welcome to The Imperfect Painter. I'm Rachel McCampbell and I'm so glad you're here. Today we're going to do a really fun painting exercise, a reductive or subtractive painting. It's so easy to do and so much fun. You're going to love this. All you'll need is a board, some molding paste, some palette knives and brushes, water, a few golden open acrylic paints, and that's about it. I love this process because the open acrylics take hours to dry. It gives you so much time to experiment and play. Plus, working in a reductive technique as opposed to an additive way will enhance your studio practice by challenging you as an artist to think differently about how to work with paint. You know what? Let's not talk about it. Let's just go do it. Okay, so we have an 8 inch by 10 inch piece of illustration board and I'm going to start by using some golden hard molding paste. You can get this anywhere and two different palette knives just for fun, different shapes and a small squeegee. So we're going to load up a palette knife and generously spread the molding paste onto the board. For all of you bakers out there, it's similar to frosting a cake. Now the molding paste is wonderful because it doesn't dry immediately. Even though it is an acrylic product, it does not dry all of the sudden. So you have some time to work with it. Right here I'm doing a little deckling. I'm deckling the edge and it'll harden and dry like that so it looks like a, the edge of a deckled paper. But It's beautiful on a float frame have that edge. So as you can see, there's a lot of texture here when you use a palette knife. If you want to smooth some of that out, that out, a squeegee is excellent for that. I mean, you can get it to where it's as smooth as glass, as you can see. Or you can keep some texture. So I like to do a little of both. I like smoothness with some texture in areas. I get that squeegee from squeegeepress.com and it's wonderful if you're using the cold wax medium as well. So you can manually go back and add some texture yourself if you want to by putting the tip of the squeegee in and mark making, or you could use your palette knife or a bamboo stick, whatever you want to use, and then push back over it. Just make it look like a texture. It can look like a stuccoed wall, however you want to make it look. Now, this is gonna take a while to dry, so I am doing this right now in the evening. So I'm just gonna let this dry overnight and then come back tomorrow and we'll do the painting. And I'll see you back tomorrow. Good morning, we're back. I've got my reference picture of my Satsuma tangerine. I have my panel, which I think I'll set out in a portrait mode. I've got my palette knives, my squeegee, I've got some brushes, some raw umber, and some quinacridone nickel azo gold. Take your paint and mix it about half and half and spread it with your palette knife across your panel. Then I'm going to use my squeegee to get a very smooth texture on the top. You really don't want it any thicker than about a sixteenth of an inch. Now I'm going to use the back of a paintbrush to draw out my shape. And then I will consider my light source before I start to remove anything. Um, I think it's coming from the right a little bit, so that's where I'm going to begin. And I'm just going to remove paint. Remember, this is a subtractive removal process. So you're wiping away, which can be very strange. <laughs> Uh, trust me, it kind of warps your brain a little bit, but it's really fun to do, and I promise you'll get used to it. So I'm using about a half an inch brush to wipe away paint, and I wipe it away, put it on my paper towel, and keep wiping. And you'll see the harder you press down, the more you wipe off, it'll get lighter and lighter. You'll notice as you play with these paints that as they dry and set up, they react a little differently to how you wipe things off. When you start, it's super, super wet and gooey, and you're thinking, how is this gonna ever work? And then just give it a little time, and it starts to set up, 
and then the wiping away actually has some resistance to it so it makes it easier to manipulate and have some interesting effects. Another nifty tool is a Q-tip. They're great for wiping away and giving you a nice line as well or a dot shape. I'm using the Q-tip to dab it and create the little bumps that you see on a tangerine, the little tiny divots. You can remove the paint and then you can keep adding it, pushing back in until you like the tonal qualities that you achieve. Now I'm taking a little thin brush and wiping away the paint in a smaller stroke way, making little marks. You can use your paper towel to wipe away the paint and reveal that beautiful texture that we created with the molding paste. It's just beautiful. I love seeing the texture beneath and the golden glow of the quinacridone paint. When you run your squeegee over it, it really picks up the very top highest points of your molding paste so that it pulls that away and you can see the texture just perfectly. Because these are open acrylics, they stay wet for quite a long time. So normal acrylics in this situation would probably be drying pretty hard by now, but these are still moving around and, and lovely to work with. A really fun technique is to add water to your piece. So you can throw some water on there with your brush or with a toothbrush and then wipe it away for a big reveal. This is part of the imperfection of things that I love because you don't know where it's going to land and it's just you know a surprise again once once you flick that water you don't know where it's going to go until you wipe it away and it's like aha there it is using a toothbrush will give you much finer little droplets Try different brushes. This is a fan brush that I'm using to create a little texture in the paint. Now that the paint has been removed a bit, you can get back in with your Q-tip and dab and, and you'll have a little bit of a different result. More of a subtle lifting, I would say. And don't forget about finger painting. Sometimes you can get the most interesting and unexpected results from that technique. You can get painterly by taking your dry brush and moving it around creating visible brush strokes or you can try different pressures with your brushes and pushing harder into the paint will lift more up. Try pushing the paint from different directions. In this case I'm lifting up and pushing from the bottom up to get the paint off. You can lift off with your paper towel and when you push in with the paper towel, it will literally imprint the texture of the paper towel onto your piece. You can always, with this method, you could take saran wrap and wad it up and push in to create different unexpected textures or anything else you have sitting around. Just try and play and experiment with all kinds of tools. You can literally make scratch marks with your paper towel that look like some other sort of tool. Or you could get a soft, dry brush and smooth everything out. Barely move it around, finessing it very, very gently. I'm using zero pressure here, just the weight of the brush to gently, gently move the paint around. The paint stays wet for a good four hours and even later, like the next day or that evening you could reactivate by adding water to the open acrylics until they are dried completely. 
I'm going to use this brush to remove some of the thickest top layer of the dark background. I'm going back to a smaller little brush here that's dry to lift off the leaves. And then I'm going to an even smaller brush to really press down and get a fine line. I've been painting on this about 15 minutes or so, and the paint is starting to firm up, which makes it less mushy and easier to work with. At this point, I'm just removing more paint to keep my shape and texture going. So to create my round shape, I'm going to have light hitting it on the left side and more dramatically on the right side where the main light source is coming. At this point, I'm taking the squeegee just to lightly run over the area to lift off any extra paint there. Of course, my tangerine now looks like it's got a little bit of a case of the measles, but <laughs> that's okay. We'll tone all that down. But gave it all sorts of great texture by doing that. Here I'm creating some shapes just to indicate maybe a window in the background or some sort of distant light source, something to give it a little depth. And I use a dry brush to soften out the edges of the paint. Or at this point, you can lift off with a dry brush, or if it's too dried, you can moisten your brush and lift off that way. To get it even smoother, you just press harder. If I were painting a pair, this would be a really good process. I may have to pull back and uh, reshape this. It's looking a little bit too pear-like. <laughs> and I want to create a little more contrast by adding some more paint back in. I really like this contrast with the dark raw umber and the lighter Setsuma tangerine there. It's just it's starting to pop. I enjoy editing and redefining my shapes and textures. You can leave your painting in a monochromatic state like this one, or you can glaze it, and we'll get into that in a minute. It's really fun to create the lines by wiping them off. I just find the backward aspect of that really intriguing. I'm using a moistened Q-tip to go back in and get some white whites. So at this point, I've been painting a little over half an hour, and I would call this part of the painting finessing. So I'm just getting in and getting the final details that I want to pull out. For those of you used to working in an additive as opposed to a subtractive way, I know this can be a little daunting, but stick with it. It's, it's good for your studio practice to try things that are different, that are a little bit experimental and possibly in reverse. And as the paint dries, you may have to push down a little harder to lift and get the paint to remove. As I lift colors, I'm more interested in the unexpected results of what I do. I, I'm not trying to do a perfectly realistic tangerine by any means. I want something that has some life and some expression of what I'm feeling. And so I want it to be loose and the edges to be rough, and that's sort of what I'm going for here. Knowing that that was my intention from the get-go, I always had that in the back of my mind. Now you may have a whole different intention, so set your intention before you begin if you want to do a really tight, realistic painting, or do you want to have something more abstracted? Whatever it is you want to do, just maybe even write it down and, and do a little sketch on a post-it note or something just to remind you of where you're headed.
To balance the composition, I'm going to add a little white shape on the right. Again, I don't want to define anything. I'd like for it to be a little mysterious, so I'm just going to let it be a little bit of a shape. Open acrylics are so much fun. I mean, they're almost like oil paints, but not. I mean, they're very different. They're their own animal, but they're really, really fun to play with. I'm going back in with the back of my brush and redraw the shape to find the tangerine once again. I know I've said this is a reductive or subtractive technique, but please feel free to add more paint if you need to. There's no paint police coming to arrest you for doing that. <laughs> I like to keep softening the edges with a soft brush just to merge things together a little bit. Addition and subtraction, that's what it's all about. So even after all this time, I wanted to show you with the squeegee, you can still lift off the paint and get back to the bright base. I absolutely adore the gold quinacridone that emerges and just sort of glows from the molding paste below. It's so much fun to be experimental and try different ways of using the paintbrush to finally find the surface texture that you want to achieve. I'm using a moist Q-tip to go back in and find the little brighter spots and divots that I want to have on the tangerine. Wiping off these spots with a squeegee or paper towel reveals those brighter spots. Using a Q-tip or a moist brush is a much better way to get a controlled dot or highlight on your tangerine as opposed to just flicking with a brush or toothbrush or a spritzer. Thinking about contrast, I'm going to add a little more shadow beneath the tangerine and considering pulling out some more bright lights to get my highlights. I'm taking a very small signature brush and moistening it just a bit so I can make the veins in the leaf by putting down the water and then wiping it off. It's fun to use the pointed part of the squeegee to go back in and make some marks and actually draw with it too. There's a moment in both open acrylics and oils when the paint sets up and is perfect to work with. There are a lot of variables as to when that moment is based on humidity, the types of mediums you're using, your substrates, etc. But you will know when you reach it. It's that perfect moment to work with your paints and achieve the effects that you want. And here is the final finessing time where I dull the whites back that are too bright and I pull out whiter areas that are too dark. I want to create that good contrast. I know you probably can't see it as well as I can, but you will love the feel of this molding paste and how it looks beneath the squeegee and the brush and the paper towel. Just creates such a lovely, rich texture. I have never considered painting with a Q-tip really until I tried this process and I have to say I love it. It just softens the edges of the paint in a lovely way. There's something really special about using this monochromatic style of painting using raw umber and a sepia toned 
effect like this. It has an old master feel, which I just love. Now I'm going back in with a small brush and just scratching through, making a few scratch marks, little random lines. This is to create some sort of interest, almost like an old scratched photograph. So I'm going back and pushing back the light in the background. It seems like it's competing a little bit too much with the brightness of the tangerine. Now I'm scratching back in with the tip of the palette knife just to create some final little sharp lines. Then I'm going back in with a small moistened brush just to soften those edges up and to merge the lines. This is a pottery tool I have that you can use to really get in almost like a pen or pencil and make your line marks. At this point I think I'm finished. I'm at a finished place and I'm just going to stop. It's always a big question of when to know to stop. Well, I can't answer that. That's so personal. But for me I want to show you the basics of this exercise and I think I've done that. So I'm going to stop and now we're going to consider and discuss the idea of glazing. All right, a day later we are ready to glaze our painting. So it's nice and dry and I'm going to look at the open acrylics I have here. Nothing comes off on the paper towel, so I know I'm ready to go. Before we start, I want to show you something. Remember how I told you that the paint can stay wet even up to 24 hours later? Well, when I added water to this one area where the paint was pretty thick, you can see that it lifts off. Now, if you're adding just glazes gently over it, nothing would have happened because it's dry enough and tacky enough to where it wouldn't have lifted. But if I were to add enough water and pressure, yes, the paint will lift. Today we're using cadmium orange, transparent yellow oxide, Indian yellow, sap green, and raw umber. Also a half an inch flat brush. I'm dipping it in the water and I'm going to pick up some Indian yellow and start applying it on top of the painting, lightly. I prefer using transparent colors so I can get a very sheer, thin, glowing type of glaze on my painting. So Indian yellow and transparent yellow oxide, those are perfect for that. I'm also going to add some cadmium orange here because that's an opaque color and you can see the difference. If you water this color down using the open acrylic thinner, then it will act more like a transparent glaze. I'm not using much water because I don't want to reactivate the paint beneath it and wipe it off. So this gives it an orange tint or glow that makes it look a little more like a tangerine. I personally prefer to glaze using very thin, sheer layers of transparent paint. I want to add some opaque paint here just to show you the result of it and you can be the judge. I want to be careful not to cover over the beautiful monochromatic painting beneath with the opaque orange. I want it to glow through. Now I will add a little more cadmium orange mixed with the acrylic thinner to get a brighter orange glaze. I like to put down the glaze in a patchy sort of way so it won't be too symmetrical. I've washed my brush and now I'm mixing it with some sap green hue and some of the acrylic thinner. To create your glazes you can use either open medium or other golden medium products. And of course you can thin the paint with water, just be careful because of the lifting issue. And also you want to keep the percentage about two parts paint to one part water. I'm going to apply it thinly because it really doesn't need much to tint the leaves a beautiful green tone. And when I want the color to be a little darker, I just don't thin it as much. I 
I'm trying to keep this painting fairly loose and not too tight, especially along the edges, so I'm just going to go lightly with my brush. I think I'm going to darken up some of these scratch marks, so I'm going to get some raw umber and glaze over those as well, just to push them back a hair. I don't want the background to distract from the foreground. And while I have this raw umber on my brush, I'm going to go ahead and add just a few more shadows there. It's important to continually study the shape and form of the object you're painting, using lights, mediums, and darks to create the shape that you want. And then I'm going to take a little transparent yellow oxide and add it to the white areas. I just want to warm it up a little bit. The transparent yellow oxide gives the painting such a beautiful glow. I'm going to touch it over the signature too, just to warm it up and also push it back a little bit. And I'm adding just a little bit of orange in spots to carry that color around and just to add some interest. So the last thing I see missing are a few highlights I want to capture. I can still reactivate the paint by moistening it, so I'm going to take a little water, push down, and lift off the paint to create my highlights. Well, I could keep painting this until the cows come home, but I am going to call it a day and stop. I love using Golden's Open Acrylics. They are so much fun and really satisfying to work with because of the slow dry time. Just remember that you can pick up the paint and wipe it away, sometimes by accident. So you want to be cognizant of that all the time you're painting. You can mix your other acrylic paints, your golden heavy body acrylics, for example, with the open acrylics to get a different type of viscosity and drying time. I encourage you to play with all these different acrylics, try these different methods, and just have fun with it. I hope you enjoyed watching this video, and I hope to see you soon at another episode of The Imperfect Painter. I teach workshops in both the US and abroad, so I hope you'll sign up for my newsletters and I'll let you know about all my events. Keep painting! I hope you enjoyed this video. I had a great time making it for you. Send me images of your art. I'd love to see how they turned out. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel, sign up for my newsletter on my website, and share this video with your friends. I really appreciate your support. God bless you and remember to always have fun with art.